Hi, you made it! And where are you? The pantry. Well, hello, it's about talking. And everything has a place. Baskets, containers, you can see everything is etched. We know where everything is. Of course, one of the most important containers in the house are the double stuffed Oreos. But what's so funny is that Chef Amanda messes with Coco and instead of double stuff, as a prize, she'll put the mega stuff in there that you have to dig and find, and she puts some of those Oreo thins that have like no stuff inside. It drives Coco nuts, it's so funny. Homemade cookies, chips, popcorn, baking ingredients, and snacks, and on and on and on and on and on. And of course, a lot of to-go containers. So we can take things to go. This corner of the pantry is very, very organized. Everything's very neat. Um, and I know you're wondering, who lives like this? Something's gotta be messy, right? Here it goes. Are you ready? You've seen the clean refrigerator. Here's the messy one. See? This is where we hide everything that we don't want in the pretty refrigerator in the kitchen all your sauces and your extra things. And we had a bake-off this weekend, so there's a lot of whipped cream and chocolate sauce and different kinds of fruits. Two freezer drawers smashed with frozen yummies. And a little ice. Don't tell anyone, though. All the drawers have bags and these are the bags that the kids take to school when they bring their lunch now the teenagers don't do this anymore but the two younger ones do and I have the monogram number one because they're cute and number two so that when I go to the lost and found and go pick up seven of them that they've left there I know exactly which ones are mine plus I also have to-go bags for when they're running late and we're gonna throw breakfast in a bag or when it's a field trip day. It's good to have a handle bag. Lots of glass and plastic containers for the pretty fridge and for storage and easy to grab to go containers for running late in the car, eating breakfast, for field trips, for roadies. Because let's be honest, sometimes you need a roadie. This is basically my world. Took every day of the week, printed it out, laminated it, turned them into dry erase boards, and then on Sundays, I stand here with my phone and all the school calendars and the after school stuff and the extracurricular activities and tutors and coaches and everything, and I write where everyone is going so that I know and so that everyone knows. And so no one could say, I didn't know what was happening today. Yes, you did. Read the board. Oh, I almost forgot. Ice. Crunchy ice. Don't you love crunchy ice? But this one won't hurt your teeth because there's air in it. So, go. Love crunchy ice. Walking out from the pantry, you get to the garden. I love having an edible garden. It's so cool to be able to grow things, pick them, eat them, and it really actually tastes better when you grow it in your own garden. I don't know if this is just all in my head or this is actually true, but I love it. Let me, let me take you on a little tour here.
We change every season. But right now we're growing sunflowers and tomatoes. We have different kinds of lettuce. As you can see, different colors, different shapes. This section is our herb section. Um, you can see we have thyme and sage and we have Italian parsley and basil. It's really, really nice to have fresh herbs to cook with. Not that I cook, but you know. Here's some strawberries, look. There's one right there. And if you look in here, whoa. Here's some very pretty strawberries here. And they are just delicious. Mm. This I just added, this is a finger lime tree. If you know anything about finger limes, they're really, really yummy and delicious, so I'm excited for that. And then, my favorite part of the garden is the mint. When I was a little girl growing up, my mom grew mint out in the yard, and it just always reminds me of home and summer. She used to make lemonade and put fresh mint in it. I'm sure she and my dad were drinking something much more exciting with the mint in it. Um, but it just always reminds me of being a kid, and I love it. So we have three different kinds of mint growing here. But here's the thing about mint. Mint grows wild and will take over everything. So you have to keep it in a barrel, okay? Remember I told you that. The only fail of the garden are these trees. I mean, best intentions, right? So in our last house, we had these four trees in our front courtyard that produced lemons and limes. And it was really fun. And we'd go out with the kids and they'd pick them and they'd put them in a bucket and it was cool. So I thought, okay, we have five trees. I'm gonna do a mandarin orange. I'm gonna do a lemon. I'm gonna do a pink lemon. I'm gonna do all these things. When I tell you nothing grows here, I don't know why. I don't know if it's the lighting. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's the sun exposure, I don't know if it's not getting out of water, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I need to figure this out because this, even though it's pretty, is a fail. So if nothing's gonna grow here, I think I might just change all of these so that at least they're all the same looking tree. Because when you look from in the house out, each one lives in one of these really beautiful archways. And right now, it's kind of a hot mess. Okay, well I got one, whole tree, one lemon. It's good for a cocktail. Hey, sound off in the comments below. I wanna hear how you're loving everything and if you have any tips for my garden. Plus, become a subscriber because we're doing a cool giveaway.